I'm Heather Vale for Performance Marketing Insider, and joining me today is Andy Danik, the VP of Performance Advertising for Engage BDR. Hey, Andy, thanks for being here today. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Heather. So today we want to talk a little bit about buying media for the health and beauty vertical. Now, this is a pretty competitive vertical. What are some of the other drawbacks about working in this field? Uh, yeah, you, you said it. It's extremely, extremely competitive. Um, and of course, some of the things that most of our clients end up running into themselves when they try to buy media on their own is they have difficulty establishing relationships with publishers to get them to run these campaigns for them. Uh, they have difficulty establishing benchmarks for metrics that they need to be backing into, like ben, uh, like a basic CTR or click-through rate benchmark for their pre-sale and landing pages, all of which we're, we're pretty familiar with, we're very familiar with. Um, and then aside from that, buying the media can be very, very, very costly, and that's probably the most important and challenging aspect to for these for these advertisers and affiliates to, to get past. It's that initial learning curve, right? So they have to go out and buy all new media sources across different sites and channels and figure out what works. They're going to spend money to do that. Unfortunately, you don't really get a good test unless you spend unless you make the initial investment up front. So. That's kind of where our fully managed services are a huge benefit for advertisers and affiliates to leverage. We have- Okay, I'm so sorry. basically you're saying if, if they're trying to buy their own media on your RTB platform, you're saying that it's just gonna end up too much of a monstrosity to even properly test it? Well, no, no, not so much. I mean, it, it's across the board, whether they're buying direct from publishers or through our RTB or for that matter, through any other RTB, they're going to have to spend money to test, and once they get those learnings and they, they apply them and then they start scaling their campaigns accordingly, that initial learning curve could be $500 or it could be $5,000 in some cases for a brand new campaign that's never been ran across display, it could be even $15,000, $20,000. It all depends on how aggressive and how, uh, how competent the media buyer is in optimizing the traffic and the campaigns alongside of it. So um, yeah, it's more so it's more so that initial learning curve that we kind of help advertisers and affiliates get past with our fully managed services. Okay, is the learning curve in the health and beauty vertical a bigger learning curve than in other verticals? Yes, because the traffic is historically more expensive. Female thirty plus traffic is going to be pricier CPM wise than than comparable male traffic will be. Um, and it's just because the ver that specific niche audience tends to be the purchase decision makers within the household. Um, they, they generally are the ones that are buying health and beauty products online. Um, so naturally, it'll end up being a little bit more expensive. It's a more valuable audience. OK, it also seems like the female 30 plus demographic would be a little more picky, a little more choosy about the kinds of ads that they respond to. So do the yeah. ads have to be more sophisticated or? Yeah, the ads are generally very sophisticated. They have really compelling calls to action, um, typically with some sort of upfront, you know, like offer you know, a special a special offer for today's viewers or so on and so forth. And that's that's generally how People are leveraging their messaging. It's something that places a sense of urgency, and and the female female demographic receives it very very well. Okay, so if someone really 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 wants to start out with RTB at least and and figure this out on their own, what kind of creative is going to get approved, and how how does that whole process work? So typically across the real time bidding platforms. Um, those creative approvals are typically at the mercy of the SSP or an exchange. Um, the creative that will end up getting approved for those, through those channels will be very highly branded, um, typically non-aggressive with, with I, I guess I, I can say, a, a non-aggressive call to action. Um, and most of the time, they don't end up working all that well. You end up backing into a high cost per click, and you end up collecting a very little bit of data because you don't get a ton of clicks for the, for the money. Whereas 
when you're leveraging direct buys through our fully managed side, we already have relationships with our publishers, really great relationships. They give us a lot of flexibility in what we can and can't run. Um, all of which 100% is going to be approved by the publisher beforehand. We don't have to worry about things getting paused after it gets launched and approved and so on and so forth. So the, the traffic is going to be very, very consistent. Okay, so basically, you're saying that the demographic requires a more sophisticated ad and an aggressive call to action, and yet what the publisher typically would approve for someone using an RTB platform is going to be the opposite of that. Yeah, However, gonna, but you can do it with the managed platform, right? Yeah, it's going to be pretty heavily dumbed down, yeah. With the managed okay. platform, we have a little more leeway. I mean, we've spent hundreds of millions of dollars with a lot of these publishers that we leverage across our, our fully managed buying platform. So they give us a lot of flexibility in what we can run. Okay, so besides being able to run more effective campaigns if they're using the managed platform, what are the other benefits to, to going fully managed with this? So leveraging our historical placement data, we have a ton of data based on where we bought for these campaigns in the past, and it's more of so like a plug and play. Basically, we run it alongside of placements and campaigns which we've historically seen success with. Of course, campaigns that are going to be similar in nature, similar vertical or maybe even identical in a lot of cases. We'll plug it in, get a quick read, see if it see if it performs well, performs well, great, we'll scale it. If it doesn't, then we'll isolate and pinpoint a few areas of improvement. And these are pretty easy to spot since we understand how well these or how these campaigns perform on the back end, we understand what a a basic CTR benchmark should be, uh, a basic pre-sale pre page CTR, CTR benchmark should be, a conversion rate benchmark, and so on and so forth. And once we pin down <clears throat> what aspect of the conversion funnel is lacking, we can help show, show the advertiser or affiliate how to improve it. Okay, so what kind of budget is required to start out with a managed campaign? Uh, typically 25k, uh, but we do offer perform inside viewers um, a uh, a little bit of a, a entry discount um, to help lower that barrier to entry. Um, it, it all really depends on the campaign, of course. Now, if there's a campaign that's going to need a lot of testing up front, and it's going to need it, it's never been tested across display, yeah, we're going to have to spend some more money. So. One of those campaigns may cost more than ten or fifteen thousand dollars to test, whereas something that's already fully polished that's been running across other display channels, and it's a matter of just plugging it into our platform and leveraging our publishers to extend their reach, something like that, we can get started with a much smaller initial commitment. Okay, so it seems like a pretty hefty advertising budget. How long do you expect the advertiser to wait before they see a return on that? Uh, typically, once we start testing, we spend around 500 to 1000 bucks a day for these verticals. Uh, we'll test for around a week and then have enough data to either go back and start scaling placements or we'll go back to the advertiser and have them optimize any areas which need optimization. Um, so usually a week to two weeks. It also depends on how quickly the advertiser can move on their end. Um, if they're quick to get it knocked out uh, for as far as any of the of optimizations, then we can go back live and continue to scale.